Hello there, my name is Łukasz Dudka and in this ILSA video lecture I will help you understand more advanced topics related to producing live subtitling for live online streaming. We will discuss a number of topics. We will start with the following three questions. How to make live subtitles available to people who are following a live event online? how these subtitles can be displayed, and how to reduce subtitle latency in live streaming. Then, I will remind you of the differences between open and closed subtitles, and I will highlight the advantages of each of these options when it comes to live streaming. After that, I will talk about how live subtitles can be reused for recordings of live events. And finally, I will discuss various tools that you might use when you work with live streaming. My colleague Monika Szczegielska from Dostępni.eu contributed to this video lecture. Video examples that you will see have been provided by my colleague Wojtek Figiel. Let's start with how live subtitles can be made available to people who are following a live event. As you know from previous units, People who are in the venue of a live event can follow subtitles in a number of ways. Uh, for instance, on a big screen or on the individual devices such as smartphones. A similar experience is possible with live streaming. If I am watching live streaming on my laptop, I can have a second window that displays subtitles or I can use my smartphone to display them. I will now show you what this can look like. You will see a full screen window with text. So this is one solution. This is doable, but not very comfortable. If you have just one screen available to you, it will be rather inconvenient to display two windows on this one screen. Uh, this might mean that the live video will be far smaller than you would like it to be. And even if you have multiple screens or multiple devices, you will have to switch your attention and move your eyes a lot between the two screens. It is thus much more convenient to have subtitles displayed on top of the video. And this is the viewing experience we are most used to. This is an example of subtitles in live streaming provided by the Faculty of Economics at the University of Warsaw. Let's have a look. Wszyscy mamy wiele obaw, jak potoczy się walka z pandemią, jak z tego całego kryzysu wyjdzie gospodarka, w jaki sposób zmieni się nasze społeczeństwo i nasza rzeczywistość. Jednocześnie też na to nakładają się takie procesy, które już od wielu lat obserwowaliśmy, także jeśli chodzi o właśnie funkcjonowanie gospodarki, funkcjonowanie rynku pracy. Tutaj przede wszystkim myślę o cyfryzacji i o tym, że ten obraz rynku pracy bardzo istotnie się zmienia i spodziewamy się, że będzie się bardzo dynamicznie zmieniał, że w coraz większym stopniu, w coraz większej liczby zadań... As you can see, it is more comfortable to watch live subtitles if they are displayed together with the video. The issue of how to display subtitles doesn't end here. From previous modules, you will remember that there are different display modes of live subtitles. Subtitles can be shown as blocks of text, scrolling lines of text, or they can appear word by word. Here at ILSA, we recommend that you display subtitles as blocks of text in a similar way in which pre-recorded subtitling is normally displayed. You can also display them phrase by phrase. But avoid displaying subtitles word by word. Research shows this makes for a much less comfortable viewing experience. You can see and hear that for yourself. I will now show you a recording of a blind person who uses a screen reader to read subtitles out loud. Said that the blind and that can take part on equal footing with friends with disability footing with their cavalli. When subtitles appear word by word, 
they force you to read them in a rhythm that's not predictable and not very comfortable. To sum up, live subtitles should be displayed as blocks of text or phrase by phrase, but not word by word. You can find more information on this in earlier modules, as well as ILSA guidelines on live subtitling that you can access on the ILSA project website. At this point, you understand that producing live subtitles takes some time and live subtitles appear with certain latency. Subtitle latency is a fact of life. Subtitles usually appear a few seconds after the speaker uttered a sentence. The latency of subtitles should be minimized to make for a comfortable viewing experience. If you are participating in a live event and you are in the venue of this event, there's no way to eliminate subtitle latency in such a context. However, live streaming always has some technical delay that streaming providers can control. To help you understand this, I will use the following comparison. Uh, let's say you talk with your colleague on Zoom, Google Meet or Skype, Usually, there is no delay and you will and see each other in real time. This is possible because such online meetings have a limited number of participants. Live streaming, in turn, can reach thousands of people. To make this possible, it must have a technical delay. So, when you are watching a live stream, what you see in the stream is what actually happened at least a few seconds earlier. Depending on the streaming solution that you use, it can even be 30 seconds or more. In the context of live subtitling, you can use this to your advantage. If you delay a live stream further, and this is called an offset, you can minimize or eliminate subtitle latency. This allows for subtitles to have little or no latency in streaming. Here you will see an example of live streaming of an intermedia conference held at the University of Warsaw. Please check what is the delay or latency with which the subtitles appear. So where do audiences look and where do they listen? And this is, these are important questions. And um, how does this matter? How, do, how does this matter to the field of audiovisual translation? Audiovisual translation is of course all about access. Uh, if we look at subtitling, audio description, sub uh, dubbing, voiceover, all of these provide access to a multimodal text. As you can see, there's little latency. In fact, the subtitles appear too soon. And that's one of the challenges involved. If you offset the stream too much, subtitles will start appearing before the actual audio. This should be avoided. It's better for subtitles to appear with slight latency rather than too early. By the way, the offset can be the same throughout the whole event, but it can also be adjusted by the streaming provider during the event. If you know that producing live subtitles takes on average 6 seconds, then you can offset the stream by 5 seconds. Or if you know that it takes between 11 and 14 seconds to produce a subtitle, then offset the stream by 10 seconds. This way, you minimize subtitle latency and avoid subtitles that appear too early. To sum up, in live streaming, subtitles can have little or no latency and they can appear with the corresponding audio. To achieve this, the streaming provider needs to offset the live stream. Doing this is highly recommended, as minimizing subtitle latency makes for a far better viewing experience. Your viewers will thank you for it. Okay, as you learned in the ILSA course module on pre-recorded subtitling, subtitles can be open or closed. And this distinction is also important in live streaming. Closed subtitles are streamed and displayed as text on top of the video, but separate from it. Whereas open subtitles are streamed and displayed as a part of the video. Let's now look at the advantages of each of these options when it comes to live streaming. Open subtitles basically have just one advantage. They are relatively easy to add to a live stream. The streaming provider overlays them on top of the video. 
Even if the video player does not support subtitles and cannot display them, if you add open subtitles to the video, most viewers will be able to use them. On the other hand, using open subtitles in live streaming means that all viewers will see them even if they don't need to or don't want to. As these subtitles are part of the image, they cannot be switched off. If live streaming is recorded, the subtitles will also be part of the recording and there will be no way to remove them. Importantly, using open subtitles means that the blind or the deafblind users will be unable to benefit from such subtitles. In this video clip, you will see a blind person who uses a screen reader application. This blind user wants the screen reader to read the subtitles aloud. 27. Yugosmic 50% volume. Mute. M. Next. Shift plus plus K. Persisisk. 1 minutes 27 seconds of 6. YouTube video player. Group out. Now. This doesn't work as the screen reader does not see subtitles. It just detects the video player. To a screen reader, open subtitles are just pixels in the video and they cannot be interpreted or read out. To sum up, open subtitles are not recommended and should be used only when it is technically impossible to use closed subtitles. For instance, when live streaming provider has to use a video player that does not support subtitles. If so, it is recommended to make two separate streams available. One stream with a clean video, a video without subtitles, and another stream with a video with subtitles. It's less convenient and it might be more expensive to have two streams. But this gives users choice. Viewers who want subtitles will choose the stream with subtitles. Now, let's move to closed subtitles. These have a number of advantages. First, you can turn them on or off. So people who don't want to see subtitles can switch them off. Let's see how a user switches the subtitles on. Warsaw Festival to jedyna w Polsce impreza dostępna naprawdę dla każdego. Organizatorzy zrobili wszystko, aby osoby niesłyszące, niewidome czy na wózku mogły bawić się na równych prawach z pełnosprawnymi przyjaciółmi. So with closed subtitles you can turn them on or off. That's a major advantage. This also means you can provide more than one version of subtitles in live streaming. Subtitles can be available in two or more languages that viewers can choose from, all within one and the same stream. Let's see how a user chooses a different set of subtitles in a different language. Odbierać także osoby niewidome. W tym scenie zamontowane są cztery e, rusztowania metalowe, na których zawieszone są e, rzędy. Importantly, Closed subtitles can be read out by screen readers, which means that deaf or deafblind users can benefit from closed subtitles. Here you can see a blind user who listens to subtitles read out by the open source NVDA screen reader. Accessible to all. Play. The organizers have done everything so that the deaf, the blind and the wheelchair users can take part on equal footing together with non-disabled friends. Anna Kowalik, Miss Galska, Orange Poland. For us it's crucial to make Orange Warsaw Festival accessible to all music fans. We took this challenge. We try to achieve... Blind users can also change the language of the subtitles or change other settings with the help of the screen reader. Let's see how this works out. Subtitles you cosmic sees one Polish, Zaznekzo, English, United States, Met, so that the deaf. Auto play, play, thus by door, can take part on equal footing, together with non-disabled friends. Users can customize closed subtitles as per their preferences. They can change lots of things, size, color, position, etc. For instance, when you use YouTube video player, you can click on a subtitle and move it around the screen. The position you choose will be remembered throughout the whole video. If you click on a subtitle again and press the plus or minus key on your keyboard, you can adjust the size of the subtitles. To sum up, closed subtitles offer many advantages. It is recommended to use them whenever possible, as they are more convenient and offer more benefits to more users. Now, it takes a lot of effort to produce live subtitles, and it makes sense to reuse them whenever possible so as to maximize their value. 
For instance, live subtitles can be saved and shared as a transcription. They can also be reused as subtitles for the recording of the event. Uh, here comes another advantage of closed subtitles that I haven't mentioned yet. After the stream concludes, you get a clean recording of the event and you can save closed subtitles as a separate file. Depending on your tool, you will be able to save either the text alone or the text and the timecodes. If possible, it is preferable to always try to save timecodes, as this will save you or somebody else a lot of time. You can then work on this file in two ways. You can edit the text, this way you can fix any errors that appeared in live subtitles. If any important utterances were omitted or truncated, you can now add them. You can also edit timecodes. If you know that live subtitles had an average latency of, let's say, 5 seconds, you can use a professional subtitling software, such as Easy Titles or Subtitle Next, to offset all the subtitles in the file. This will move all the events and will make all the subtitles appear 5 seconds earlier. This way, you can improve the sync in a quick and easy way. If needed, you can then manually adjust the timing of particular subtitles. If you require more guidance on this, feel free to revisit the module on pre-recorded subtitling. To sum up, live subtitles can be reused as subtitles for the recording of the event. And you might then publish them, for instance, on YouTube. Or you can share them in a different way. Live subtitles will probably require some text and timing edits. By sharing a recording with your subtitles, you will be able to reach many more viewers. Finally, let's discuss tools that can be used for live streaming. As I said in the previous unit, live streaming requires a technician to control it and dedicated hardware and software. This is not something you're likely to do yourself as a live subtitler. However, it is helpful to understand what are the tools that are used most often for live streaming. When it comes to software that is used most often for live streaming, I should mention OBS and vMix. OBS is a software that you can download for free. vMix, in turn, is a commercial software and you have to pay for it. There's a trial version available though. Crucially, both OBS and vMix allow streaming providers to offset the stream and this way minimize subtitle latency. So, if your streaming provider says this cannot be done, ask him or her to do their research. In the previous unit, you learned how to use text on top to produce and display live subtitles. It is important to note here that text on top is able to send subtitles to vMix. Now, many streaming providers will make their streams available through YouTube. YouTube can be used for free and is widely used as a streaming service. YouTube, as a video player, is able to display closed subtitles and it handles pre-recorded subtitles very well. However, you should know that as of 2020, YouTube is still not very good at handling live subtitles. Uh, there are ways to send live subtitles to YouTube, but controlling the sync, the duration and the text segmentation of subtitles can be very tricky. Stream text is an example of a paid service that you can use to send subtitles to YouTube. In this video lecture, you learned more about how live subtitles can be used in the context of live streaming. You now know that live subtitles should be made available to people who are following a live event online. It's best if they appear with the video as blocks of text or entire phrases. You learned how to reduce subtitle latency in live streaming. You know that it is recommended to use closed subtitles as they offer more benefits and are accessible to more users. You are also aware of the tools that are often used for live streaming. I hope you enjoyed this Ilse course video lecture. Thank you for watching and happy streaming!